Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, so that means it's time for another Friday Reads video, and this week I finished three books. I'm currently reading five books, but possibly I'm going to start a sixth soon, so let's go. Um, so the three books I finished this week were all uh, secret books that I referred to last week that I was reading um, in order to do a little project um, for Scott of Gunpowder Fiction and Plot's birthday. I posted that video yesterday where I reviewed three books that he read this year and rated five stars. Um, so I finished all of those three books this past week, so those were um, No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, and How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. Um, and all of my thoughts about those books are in the video that I posted yesterday, so I will link that down below and I will not talk about those books here. Um, so let's just get into the, the Friday Reads portion of this, shall we? So. Um, in terms of what I am currently reading, um, I am about halfway through The Moore's Account by Layla Lalami, which I am doing as a buddy read with Melissa of Fully Booked. Um, I think we're both enjoying this. I mean, I know I'm enjoying it, and I think Melissa and I are having some good conversations about what Mustafa, the main character's um, ideas about fate are. Um, so this continues to be interesting to me, and I suspect will be a, a book, unless it takes a sudden turn, I suspect will be a book that ends up getting quite a high rating when we finish it, for me at least. Um, so still reading and enjoying this. I'm also still buddy reading um, Eichmann in Jerusalem by Hannah Arendt with Stephanie Cohen, a booktube commenter extraordinaire. Um, and we're not quite halfway through this, like maybe a little bit under the halfway mark. Um, and this has been interesting. This has also, I think, generated some good conversation. Stephanie is a very attentive buddy reader, and she knows more about Hannah Arendt's other work because this is the first Arendt I've ever read. Um, and she was just telling me in a Voxer message recently that she read um, Deborah Lips Lipstadt's book on the Eichmann trial, and so now sort of has some point of comparison with um, what Arendt is telling us here, so I'll definitely be interested to hear her thoughts about that. So this is still going well, even if it's not like the most fun, enjoyable reading for kind of obvious reasons. Um, I am also still currently reading Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. I am uh, not quite halfway through this book, again a little under the halfway Point. And I have to say, this novel is not much longer than 200 pages, it's maybe about 210 pages, but this has kind of been slow going reading for me thus far, and um, I, I guess it, I just like really don't have a good sense of where the story is going. It feels very kind of episodic in structure, it's like every chapter it's like, okay, now we hear about, you know, some other thing that happened to Okonkwo or his family. Um, and there doesn't seem to be a ton of character development of really anyone other than Okonkwo, who's not a, like, who's pretty much a sort of figure of toxic masculinity, at least uh, as he's portrayed here. Um, so I don't find him a, a particularly sympathetic or uh, enjoyable protagonist, more on non enjoyable protagonist when I get to Philip Roth but <laughs> in a minute, but. Yeah, so again, this has been pretty slow going, but I certainly hope that I will have finished this, again, not much longer than 200 page book by the time I do my next Friday Reads video, because yeah, I mean, otherwise this would be stretching this out way too long. So that's going. We're going to see how it goes. Um, I'm also still reading this anthology of native poetry for Indigathon called when the Light of the World Was Subdued, Our Songs Came Through, edited by Joy Harjo. I'm still enjoying this. I am uh, on page 125 of a 400 and, uh, I don't know, 420-something page book. Um, so I guess that's maybe a quarter or so of the way in. Um, I did want to read you a poem from this volume that I quite liked. Um, this is by John Trudell. It is called Diablo Canyon. Today I challenged the nukes. The soldiers of the state placed me in captivity, or so they thought. They bound my wrist in their plastic handcuffs, surrounding me with their plastic minds and faces. 
They ridiculed me, but I could see through to the ridicule they brought on themselves. They told me squat over there by the trash. They left a soldier to guard me. I was the Viet Cong. I was Crazy Horse. Little did they understand, squatting down in the earth, they placed me with my power. My power to laugh, laugh at their righteous wrong. Their sneers and their taunts gave me clarity to see their powerlessness. It was in the way they dressed and in the way they acted. They viewed me as an enemy, a threat to their rationalizations. I felt pity for them, knowing they will never be free. I was their captive, but my heart was racing through the generations, the memories of eternity. It was beyond their reach. I would be brought to the internment camp to share my time with allies. This time, I almost wanted to believe you when you spoke of peace and love and caring and duty and God and destiny. But somehow, the death in your eyes and your bombs and your taxes and your greed and your face life told me, this time, I cannot afford to believe you. So I thought that was quite a powerful and moving poem, and that is just one of several poems that I've liked so far in this anthology. So I'm still reading and enjoying this um, quite a bit. And the last book I'm currently reading is Sabbath's Theater by Philip Roth, which I basically suggested last week to Sandy of Ms. Reads A Lot that we do an impromptu buddy read of this book because this book is on her list of um, the 1001 books that she's trying to read for this year, 2021. And she... Um, had been kind of like nervous or, or nervous about this one, I guess, because she's heard it's not it's not great. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I've read Philip Roth before, and I was kind of curious about this one because it seems pretty polarizing. So I was like, hey, Sandy, do you want to buddy read this? And she said, yeah. So now we're buddy reading. <laughs> so, um, so we're about 140 pages into this so far, and yeah. So to talk about unlikable protagonists and main characters, uh, hello. <laughs> So the main character of this book, the, the protagonist, um, is Mickey Sabbath, and he is a 64-year-old man who is in an unhappy marriage and whose mistress, uh, Drenka, with whom he used to share many depraved and, uh, yeah, just many, many depraved and numerous sexual ex exploits has passed away, and now he's kind of been thrown into an existential crisis upon Drinka, his mistress's death. Um, there's a lot of really depraved sexual things that are described in this book, and I have to say, having recently read Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, <laughs> um, my threshold for reading about depravity has been raised uh, substantially. <laughs> so. Thus far, nothing I've read in this book is as bad as Earthlings, and so I'm like, all right, I'm good, I can finish this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I told I told Sandy in my Voxer message to her that I feel like the all the sex stuff in this book is almost a red herring because I feel like at its core, Mickey Sabbath is a kind of tragic Shakespearean figure. Basically, I feel like Philip Roth thought to himself. I'm gonna write Hamlet if Hamlet was like an old pervert. <laughs> and that's pretty much what this book is in a nutshell. Um, because he's, again, like I said, having this existential crisis and sort of questioning the whole meaning and value of his life. And uh, he's very obsessed with death. Um, and so I see him as quite a tragic figure, even though he's, again, quite unlikable and does a lot of awful things. So that's going well. Um, and then, so those are all the books I'm currently reading. And uh, now for the, the poll. So yesterday I got a very exciting package in the mail. It was from Blackwell's and it was my copy of Olga Tokarczuk's recently released English translated version of the books of Jacob. <laughs> so as you can see, this is another brick toe. <laughs> so um, this book is 892 pages long. And um, it's basically about Jacob Frank, who was a charismatic Jewish leader in 18th century Poland, who founded, and he was also a false messiah, he founded his own sect of, uh, sect of religion called Frankism and, and got all these adherents. Um, and... So that's basically what the what the book is about in a nutshell, I'm led to believe. And um, yeah, now that I have this in my possession, I read the 
is it the preface or the, the prologue? Um, and I was I was kind of I was kind of hooked by that, and so now I'm really tempted to. Even though I had said before that I was not going to read this book this year, I'm. I did the math, and if I start this book today or tomorrow, I would only have to read 21 pages a day in order to finish it by the end of 2021. So um, I'm going to read you the prologue because it's just it's just one page. Once swallowed, the piece of paper lodges in her esophagus near her heart, saliva soaked. The specially prepared black ink dissolves slowly now, the letters losing their shapes. Within the human body, the word splits in two, substance and essence. When the former goes, the latter, formlessly abiding, may be absorbed into the body's tissues, since essences always seek carriers in matter, even if this is to be the cause of many misfortunes. Yenta wakes up. She was just almost dead. She feels this distinctly now, like a pain, like the river's current, a tremor, a clamor, a rush. With a, delicate, with a delicate vibration, her heart resumes its weak but regular beating, capable. Warmth is restored to her bony, withered chest. Yenta blinks and just barely lifts her eyelids again. She sees the agonized face of Elisha Shore, who leans in over her. She tries to smile, but that much power over her face she can't quite summon. Elisha Shore's brow is furred, his gaze brimming with resentment. His lips move, but no, no sound reaches Yenta. Old Shore's big hands appear from somewhere, reaching for her neck, then move beneath her threadbare blanket. Clumsily, he rolls her body onto the side so he can check the bedding. Yenta can't feel his exertions. No, she senses only warmth and the presence of a sweaty, bearded man. Then suddenly, as though from some unexpected impact, Yenta sees everything from above. Herself, the balding top of Old Shore's head. In his struggle with her body, he has lost his cap. And this is how it is now, how it will be. Yenta sees all. So I was very intrigued by that prologue and kind of want to keep reading. Um, and like I said, I did the math. So if I start this book today or tomorrow, I would only have to read 21 pages a day to get to the end of it by the end of this year because it has 892 pages. Um, but the thing is, I had already said that I wanted and I was planning to read um, Dostoevsky's The Idiot in December, which is, I think, about 615 pages or so. Um, and so if I... So basically my question is this. Should, should I read Dostoevsky's The Idiot and also read <laughs> Tokarczyk's The Books of Jacob? Because I would be reading these at the same time. I mean, I would start The Books of Jacob today or tomorrow. Um, and not start The Idiot until December. But I mean, do I really want to be reading two big books at the same time? So yeah, leave me your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you think I should just read The Idiot? Or do you think I should read The Books of Jacob? Or should I read both of them? <laughs> so yeah, let me hear your thoughts about that down in the comments below. Also, if you have thoughts on any of the other books I've mentioned, I would love to hear that. Um, thank you for watching this. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, what do you kill you? Call your mama.